concentrate our professional opinion on the um, the proposed methodology for the delivery of the various LRT projects. So that's what this paper does. Um, <coughs> we share a common goal with Metrolinks, Metrolinks and with IO, that is we want to get building. You know, clearly these, uh, cons these projects need to be started. Everyone recognizes that uh, we've got to actually start the work. So there's absolutely um, nothing between us on that point. Um, having said that, there are a few uh, points that we think the commissioners should be aware of and that we should highlight as uh, concerns. Uh, and they are like, fleshed out in this paper. So um, I'll let uh, Sammy go through the detail. Uh, and then we'll take any questions that commissioners have got here with, with, during the presentation of the project. As soon as possible. Uh, unimpeded with TTC concerned issues. The common the goals between TTC and Metrolinx are common. The goals are have a successful project, proceed with the project as soon as possible, and deliver transit to Toronto as soon as possible. We have excellent relationship with Metrolinx staff. What will fundamentally differ is the, the approach by which every agency believes is the best way to deliver this project. Metrolinx board decision in April 25th this year is to proceed with the full project, Eglinton Crosstown, Scarborough RT, uh, RT, the conversion to LRT and extension to Shepherd, Shepherd East LRT, West, West LRT, and Metrolinx Direct Infrastructure to tell you uh, to deliver these projects. And this plan is, is supported by TDC, by City Council, by the province. And we can proceed in the full implementation to meet. By way of background, Metrolinx Act uh, 2006 directed that Metrolinx has the authority to one of the project, projects, approve project scope, budget, schedule, and delivery method, oversee uh, operation plan and procurement, and approve the terms of terms and condition of construction contract. So, not, so notwithstanding TTC concern and issue that would be outlined in this presentation, Metrolinx is acting within its mandate to choose and select a project delivery for the project. We have a master agreement between uh, Metrolinx and TTC and to a lesser extent infrastructure and Ethereum. The draft master agreement was in place in 2009 and 2010. The master agreement under the file of all uh, defined the roles and responsibilities of each party or each agency, formalize the governance structure, satisfy Metrolink's responsibility for ownership, accounting rules, and ownership of the project, and appoint a TTC program management <coughs> manager accountable to both Metrolink and the Commission for the delivery of the project. Basically, the rules are Metrolinx oversee the project and approve award of contract. So since we have the master agreement, all the contract award uh, went to Metrolinx board, not the commission. TTC provide the overall management and delivery of the project. Infrastructure Ontario would act as a procurement agent for selected element of the project. This is the the government structure, organization chart that the three agencies agreed. You can see that all the delivery function is under the TTC mandate. Metrolinks have uh, the own staff plus uh, consultant providing owner engineer function to oversee the provide oversight of what we do and award the contract. So we have a procurement people from Metrolinks sitting in our offices approving and signing off a contract before we go to the contract award. We have two levels of a governance structure or executive committee uh, that resolve any outstanding issue that cannot be resolved within staff. This is the project or both the project continue during the planning, EA and design and construction to the extent that we did construction based on this governance structure. So as of today, we're managing the project in uh, all the aspects, and Metrolinx provide oversight and sign off in the projects. So as far as the program management that, that we provide, we designed the TTC standard and developed construction staging. 
we go to competitive procurement process for either design and construction. We provide construction management and construction staff to oversee the contract with the construction. And uh, last but not least, we provide community relations and community officers that embedded with the team to act as an advocate to the community with the project team so we can resolve most of the issues, to get most of the community issues during the design leading to the construction. They have important function during construction, but really most of the heavy lifting happened during the design to design something that the community would accept and mitigate their, uh, their, their concern. Infrastructure Ontario has delivered many projects to the province, largely hospital, courthouse, and prisons. They started to get involved in transit in both Waterloo and Ottawa. None of them have been, uh, have been built so far. Uh, they have what we call AFP delivery. It's, it's, it's acronym for Alternative Finance Procurement. It's a different name for P3 that's commonly known. It's essentially hire a big construction firm to develop the design, or complete the design. The design would be progressed with the owner uh, up to preliminary design, then turn over to the private sector to complete the design, uh, manage the construction, develop construction staging, financing, and for many projects included, uh, including uh, included uh, operating and maintenance for 25, 30 years uh, concession contract. Metrolinx, TTC, and Infrastructure Ontario, and these are the following principles. All the project will be delivered under the TTC overall program management, put all the pieces together, ensure the commonality of standards, facts, and all the stuff. TTC design bid build, that's our traditional way of delivering project. That's what we've been delivering the project for the last 80 years, including Shepherd Subway, including Spine Subway, is design bid build. Design bid built is TTC hire consultants through a competitive bidding process, design a piece of the project to 100%, to go to the second procurement, uh, competitive procurement to hire a contractor to, to do the construction, construction and under the overall uh, TTC construction management supervision. So we decided that this is the best approach for uh, for elements of the project that have high risk and have high likelihood of community disruption. Infrastructure of Ontario AFP, uh, we, we agree that, it, uh, that we can implement this approach for elements of the project that have minimum risk and minimum community disruption. That's, that's all agreed to as part of the master agreement 29210. So to represent that graphically, these are the four projects that you are aware of. These elements are agreed to be designed mid belt of TTC traditional approach, approach, mainly the right of ways. Uh, whether Shepherd or Eglinton, the right of way would be designed mid belt. We we saw opportunity to have a design TTC design belt, which is different than IO or sorry for Eglinton inline stations and uh, by combining two or three stations in one big con one contract we so that we can manage the, the risk and the community disruption uh, and at the same time leverage some of the big construction companies to have attractive package to deliver. The other components are what we agreed at that time to be I.O. delivery type of thing as a procurement agent. Again, within the TTC overall project management, we have integrated team in our offices of TTC, international uh, 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 consultant companies, Metrolinx, and I.O. sitting in the same office delivering the projects. So the element that we agreed and proceeded uh, Proceeded on as I/O type of uh, contract are the yards, the metal and storage yard, and the SRT. The common factor between the two is they have minimum community impact. The SRT has almost uh, uh, very minimal community impact. They are a huge parcel of land. The contractors can work in isolation, and these elements. Uh, scheduled savings, 
stagger compression can come from increased workflows. So, so the more people they throw at the project or this element, the faster they can finish the project. In the right of way, we're hesitant to do that because we have to, to address community issues. And the SRT, there is a technical issue with the SRT that we felt that if you if we procure it as design bill, it's going to encourage a uh, contractor to come with some innovation as far as how we do it. We, uh, the SRT, we have to raise the roof because the LRT is... So it encourages consult, uh, uh, consortium, contractor and consultant to come up with a way how to raise the roof. We don't really care how to raise the roof as long as they meet the, the specs and, and, uh, and the standard. For example, the shepherd yard, the shepherd yard we went as far as <coughs> issuing the RFP with IO to build the shepherd mental storage facility. It was about four weeks away from closing when the whole plan was changed to all underground. And uh, we worked with IO and Metrolinx to put it. We were satisfied with, uh, with the way the contract was uh, going to be left. You can see here that we say maintenance. What we mean maintenance here for the yard, for example, is maintenance of the building, not the vehicle in the yard, not the operating system, the actual building, and it gives some advantage to Metrolinx to have the building in the state to repair for 25 years, 30 years uh, concession period, and we agree to that. We still maintaining the vehicle and the operating system and the vital uh, system that require to deliver service. However, in April of 2011, Metro X advised us of two changes. Number one, in Metro X role will be changed from oversight function to actual implementation of the project. And Metro, and, uh, Metro X project will be uh, uh, delivered entirely by uh, infrastructure repair. TTC will still, will still operate the completed line, but the delivery and the governance will completely change. The stated advantage of the AFT, the way we understand it from the from Internet and I.O., is the fair cost later to later in the project. So when we do a project, we uh, pay the contractor monthly on the progress made. They don't do that. They pay, they, they finance a project for a number of years, between 10 to 30 years, depending on how they do the project. Transfer risk from public sector to private sector. Budget and schedule predictability, encourage innovation, cost saving, and faster completion. We have expressed to Metrolinx our concern with this approach, and we've been talking to Metrolinx about our concern and issue, issues for the last 12 months or more. However, in order to provide some clarity on the issue, TTC invited AFTA, American Public Transit Association, to assemble a team of high-level executives, transit executives from North America, to assist us, us means TTC and, and Metrolinx, on what's the best way to deliver projects. And the, the report has more information about the credential of these people, but between the four of them, they deliver over $60 billion worth of project, and they're very highly regarded uh, in the industry and considered as leader and authority in project delivery. Metrolinx delivery is for the Eglinton Crosstown. The tunnel will continue as is, as designed bit built, and the rest of the line will be packaged in one line, in one contract. And uh, they expect and hope to have a contract by 2014, and they're maintaining that the project will be completed by 2020. Shepherd East, same type of thing, 2014, 2018 opening, 2014 award of contract, 2018 opening. SRT is 2014 award opening 2019. Finch West LRT, Finch West, uh, LRT 2015 to 2019. And the shepherd, the, the shepherd maintenance, all the maintenance storage facility continue with I.O. as we have agreed to that previously anyway. This is the schedule that provided by Metrolinx to its board, uh, outlining 
and the issue of RFP and the construction. And you can notice here that all the RFPs almost going to be in the market at the same time, all the construction is going to happen at the same time. So the after peer review have agreed with TTC concern, and I'm going to outline uh, TTC and after conclusion and concern. The first is metering schedule is unrealistic, and they outline and we outline a few concerns. Number one is it's required the design to be suspended. There are not the uh, 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 some station that we reach reach or reaching 30% design now. We have to stop the design within the procurement. Require all the stations to be or all the project ready to be designed and constructed at the same time. And as far as Eglinton specifically, uh, their comment about, or our comment about the schedule unrealistic, Mitterrand schedule required the entire project to be built in four years. So by award of contract of 2014, and please remember that the contract is awarded with less than 100% design. That's a whole type of design job. So if that contract is awarded by 2014, and it's going to be a challenge to get all this contract awarded by 2014, 2015 for all the projects that's uh, with consultant and project management resources available in North America. <laughs> so anyway, assuming that the, issue, that the contract would be awarded in 2014, the consortium is going to take about a year to design something, six months to a year to design something to start construction. They don't have to design the whole project, they have to design a piece of it like we do. But it's going to take some time. It's going to involve application and obtaining some permits of some sort, whether from the city of Toronto to move utilities or building permit or what have you. So let's assume that uh, to be optimistic that the construction is actually going to start by 2015. The stated completion date is 2020. The project will going to need at least a year of testing and commission. So back off a year from 2019, you start 2015, you have to finish by 2019 to test and commissioning. So really the entire project is going to be done in four years. Uh, we don't think this is this is realistic uh, or achievable. The other issue concurrent with that, because the project, the schedule is very aggressive, is you push more construction in the right of way. Again, our concern, not the AR, not the bit, is the right of way and going through the communities. You push more construction uh, to the community in four years that you have 10 underground stations and, and, and actually 20 kilometers right away but at the same time. It means more community impact with this construction. And because the contract is so huge, it's going to be very difficult, and get to it later, to after the award of contract to actually address the community concerns. Shepard, Finch, and uh, uh, SFT, we have no issue with the schedule. However, we know that Shepard, under TTC proposal, or the proposal that was agreed on, we can restart construction in Shepard 2013, and instead of Metro S 2014. The completion date is going to be the same, but uh, it's just the fair of construction of Shepard by a year. Finch and the SFT, no issue really as far as the schedule. It seems okay. Documentation develop a realistic schedule, phase construction, meaning less impact on the community, allow enough time for test and commissioning. For metro lens, we don't understand how, exactly how much they allow for test and commissioning. So in our schedule, we allow a year, but we allow a year because in our schedule, we, we are able to, to do some testing as we go along, as pieces are being completed. With metro lens schedule, that a year would not be enough because everything is going to come online at the same time. Continue with the design. There's no point uh, suspending design now when the, uh, uh, for two years. Continue with the design and start Shepard as soon as possible. Next, uh, concerns private financing. The TTC were not expert in financing. The APTA peer review that we retain, they're not expert in financing either. The province is. So please take this note to what it meant. We know the following. We know that private financing is more costly than public financing. To finance something for 10 years, uh, probably is going to carry about 50% or more premium to pay over private sector. 
what we understand is private sector will have to pay four or five percentage point more than public sector over 10 years, about 40 percent, then get a compounding effect. So at least 50 percent premium for financing. We wouldn't understand this. Two, whether there is ability in the market to have contractor financing in multi billion dollar projects or not. And thirdly, is, is a big flag that we took to Metro and IO to be cautious with this thing. In the last 15 years, we only found one project that completed with private finance. I'll talk about transit project. That's the kind of the line. The kind of the line that private financing was about 30%, and essentially it's covered funding gap, but it wasn't meant to deliver value for money. The Eagle Line in, in Denver, same thing, they have about 25%, 30% private financing because they had they had, they have to proceed with the project to with the project to go to the next referendum to get sales tax to pay for the project. So again, same type of thing. It's a covered funding gap, not to provide value for money. Uh, we understand that Ottawa are doing something similar, we don't they still at the early stages. So when you have something that uh, have very limited application, no application at all in North America, you have to be extra careful adopting this, especially when you have multi-billion dollar type of projects. Competition, I think everybody can agree that the larger the projects, the less competition you can get. So not, not only that you have a, 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 a contract, multi-billion dollar contract, now you tag in the ability to finance, and it would be very hard to get uh, a competitive bidding, uh, a competitive bidding of three or four bidders. We expect that we're going to get one or maybe nothing. Uh, internally, in the last four months, we advised Midlands and Iowa that we prefer to limit the size of the contract about half a billion dollar contract, and we felt comfortable that would attract three, four bidders per package. Uh, the peer review came and, uh, and presented exactly the same number, $500 million to attract competitivity. Multi-billion dollar project, it carries the risk of having one bid or no bids, especially when you tag in the financing piece to <coughs> Community impact, which I started explaining. All the design happened at the same time, all the construction happened at the same time. And uh, the problem for the community is, A, you're pushing more construction in the community in a very aggressive schedule. B, the contract is actually awarded before the design is completed. So we know from our experience that communities don't really express their concern at the 10% conceptual design stage. They express their concern when we get down to finishing the design and go through that field construction stage, and that's when they actually start this thing. So the community impact has to be dealt with after the award of contract. And after all of the contract, it's going to be difficult because you have a contract awarded for a fixed amount price. And uh, Metroids might choose to have some cash allowance bills and bills in the contract, but the fact is, they have a very aggressive schedule to begin with. They have to do all the construction, the, 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 the station construction concurrently. So the schedule impact is going to be very tight uh, and, and probably very difficult to accommodate. The second is the cost of the change itself. The community concern might be minor in nature, but the time impact, because you have the financing piece to it, you have to carry a financing charge for three weeks, for a month, for two months until the issue is resolved. The financing piece we expect to be much more expensive than the, actually, the actual issue that the community wanted to address. Project delivery. APTA and TTC uh, both agreed that one size doesn't fit all. And we have to look at different project elements and select the, 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 the best project delivery for each of these pieces. So this is the ATTC approach. 
from is not TTC approach, it's what the approach that we agreed all that we're going to adapt it to 9.10. This is the after review. So tunneling, design bit build, after design bit build, Metronics agree with that, that's not an issue. Eggman station, inline station, package two, three, two or three station in the package. After agreeing, that's the, the, the appropriate approach. Uh, interchange station, like Eggman West, Eggman Young, and Kennedy, have, have to or must have, must be designed bit built to manage. It's a, it's, it's a complex station, it's a live station, we have to manage the passenger and protect our station. Scarbo RT, design build maintained with IO, we agreed to that. Peer review said design bit build, they don't say, uh, they don't put the F part of it because they didn't understand the financing piece, so it's simple. Shepard, we said design bit build to protect the right of way of communities. Have to differ a little bit with TTC and, and Shepard and Finch. They said you can deliver it either way, there is no preference, you can do a design bit build or you can do a design build. After said both project delivery can work. Yard design uh, TTC agreed that it's IO type of contract. Again, the after said design build maintain, which is the same thing. We just didn't didn't agree to the financing part. System design build that's how system is being uh, is, is delivered anyway. So there's no issue after the point the same thing TTC looked the same. So in conclusion, the schedule schedule on the listing would recommend, recommend that mental banks have a closer look at the schedule and go down in detail and develop a construction schedule with associated construction footprint that would be, uh, would be required to do this. Private financing, as I said, we don't understand it, but we'd like the province to have a second look at, at the merit of this. Limited competition, if, if limited competition is going to increase, co increase cost. Limited competition is going to come from two things, size of contract, multi-billion dollar contract, and to the financing piece. Wholesale risk transfer. Risk transfer uh, 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 from public sector to private sector could not be done in wholesale approach. You transfer risk to the contract, risk to the contract that can control, mitigate, and profit from the risk. So by having better productivity, he makes more money. Good, you transfer the stress. But the risk that the contractor cannot control and cannot profit from it, you better off keep it because the contractor is going to price it way too high and any change is going to require a significant change order, i.e. community impact, i.e. geotechnical uh, and soil information. They can control it. They're not going to spend. We, we, can, we, we get the geotechnical information for England for the last two years and we haven't finished. Contractor is not going to spend two years before tender to get the genetic information. So we keep this risk to the owner. So the whole point of risk transfer, you transfer risk to the party that is best able to control, mitigate, and profit from it. And if you can do that, as an owner, you keep the risk. Community impact, it's, it's with this big contract, uh, community impact is going to come, and it's going to result in cost or scheduled impact if they are uh, incomplete. Project delivery, we encourage Metro Links to look at the project element, not the whole thing, and, this, and decide with, uh, with the TTC and with the help of other transit experts what's the best way to deliver various, various project elements. Now, what's the TTC role if the province uh, pushed ahead with the AFP? Well, with the operating of the TTC system. So any underground uh, station, it has to be a uh, connection to the station, and we have four interchange stations. We have Eglinton West, Eglinton Young, Kennedy, and Don Mills. Have to be designed to TC standard, have to be signed, the design and construction station have to be signed off by TTC, because it's an existing facility, and we encourage MetroLens to look again at the schedule to allow time or at least for TTC to respond and review the design properly and provide provide company TTC would be required to sign safe, the system safety certification, which means the system is safe to be operated. This is a certificate that's not not signed by the owner, it's signed by the operator. So TTC have to sign it, 
and therefore we have to review all the operating system and and continue to be involved throughout the project for the operating system. Again, same comment with the schedule. As TTC program management, this function will no longer be required. It's going to be transferred to Metrolinx. TTC staff from the Transit Expansion Department will be uh, uh, transitioned and to other areas of the organization with the construction department, and mainly the construction department that delivered the state of good repair project, the Spadina, uh, Spadina extension project, uh, in order to retain expertise, succession planning, we, uh, construction department, Spadina, and engineering department, that report to me, we rely a lot on in-house consultant. Now we can get the TTC staff to replace some of the consultant. The community engagement that we started for the Eglinton and the Light Trail project, we want to continue doing it, apply the same principle to the rest of the organization. So in conclusion, TTC and TTC and APTA have concern about the veteran schedule. We believe it's unrealistic. If TTC pressed ahead, uh, sorry, it's the province pressed ahead with the AFP project delivery, TTC will no longer project manage the project. However, we're going to stay involved just by virtue of the fact that we are operating with the existing uh, uh, system and we're operating with the new system and will always be available for metrolinks for discrete or uh, from time to time to provide any technical advice they, they feel they might need from time to time. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you, Simon. So there's some deputies, but I also know that uh, the CEO wants to make a few comments. Thank you, Chair. Right. Um, I just want to make a few comments. Just a thank you, Simon. That's a very uh, comprehensive summary. That is a lot for people to take in, and I just wanted to make some key points um, as the CEO. Look, first off, this is not about the TTC being resistant or being awkward about this, okay? And that's why I made the point at the start that um, at the end of the day, that paper was remitted to us. We were asked to come back to report back, and that's what we've just now done. Um, I make the point earlier that we've got a common objective, which is to get this thing built, or to get all these systems built, and there's nothing between us on Metro, between us and Metrolinx, stroke IO on that. We want to get on with it, and we want to get some shovels in the ground. Uh, second key point is that we explicitly acknowledge that it's the province's prerogative to both fund and um, implement the model that they see fit. Ultimately, it's their cash, so they should uh, be ultimately be able to determine how they see fit. But what we're doing here is flagging some concerns that we, we feel need to be addressed. You pay us to exercise due diligence, so that's what we've done. Uh, but we're not arrogant enough to think that we've always, we always have the right answers, which is why we brought in international experts, okay? And these were independent people. They weren't consultants. We didn't pay them. Uh, they're people who know what they're doing, and what they're doing, and if, if, as, um, as those bios showed, uh, have delivered a lot of projects. So these are people who's, who's, um, uh, opinions we should be mindful of. So it's not about us being um, resistant to new ideas. In fact, we've already said that we think AFP is a good fit for some of the elements of the scheme. Um, so we, you know, we are open to that. Um, whatever your decision and whatever your direction, obviously we'll live with it, we want to get on with it. Uh, the one thing we guarantee is that we will continue, as we have up until now, to work very constructively with Metrolinx and IO because ultimately we share that common objective. So I just thought there were real key points to the Thank you very much. So there may be questions if you